Okay, welcome. We've made it to the last question on the exam. And I, I find that, uh, just to say, these questions are kind of annoying because uh, not only are the scenarios overly complicated in context, but they there are multiple step problems that often involve algebra and graphing. And they're annoying because there's so much detail you have to put into it extra kind of annoying because it's the last question on the exam and you're probably tired. You might even consider doing some of these problems first when you're fresh, but it's up to you. So let's take this problem piece by piece together. I just wanted to say it's okay if you feel annoyed by this kind of problem. It says the Real Good Cinema is conducting a mathematical study and it's there there are 200 seats and adult tickets cost twelve fifty, child tickets cost six twenty five. The goal is to sell at least $1,500 worth of tickets. And here they say write a system of linear inequalities that can be used to find the possible combinations of adult tickets X and child tickets Y. All right, phew. So adult tickets are X, child tickets are Y. And they tell us if we add all these tickets in some combination, there are 200 seats. So the total amount of tickets always has to be less than or equal to 200. That's our first inequality. Second inequality. Well, it's 1250 times the number of adults per adult plus 625 per child. And we're trying to sell at least 1500, so greater than or equal to $1500 worth of tickets. That's our system. Now they want us to graph the system. Uh, on the set of axes on the next page, I have it below, and uh, label the solution with an S. All right, so let's graph this thing. So first we've got x plus y is less than or equal to 200 x plus y is less than or equal to 200. I really like to isolate y. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So I get y is less than or equal to uh, 200 minus x. You don't have to do that. If you like to think of all the combinations that add to less than 200, and that's easier for you to graph, go for it. For me, um, I like to think of y by itself. Because when I do this, it's a linear function. 200 is my intercept here. Right, so here um, this is the y-axis, right, uh, and we know that in this form, mx plus b essentially, uh, or b in this case, b minus mx, b is the y-intercept, right? That's the point zero two hundred, and I'm subtracting x, right? So the slope is m is negative one. So here that just means if you look at our x-axis, it's going up by tens. That just means if we go um, down one. The slope is negative one, so if we that slope is rise over run, right? Rise over run. So that means every time we go down one on the rise, we go up one on the run. It's negative one over positive one. That's what this means. So let's write that down. M equals negative one over one. That's negative one. That's our slope. So we go down one, up one, down one on the y-axis, up one on the x-axis. But if we're going up by tens here on the intervals, that's the same thing as going down ten and up ten. Downtown the rise, uptown on the run. So we go downtown on the rise, uptown on the run. Right? And we keep doing that. And you can see it's kind of like down one, up one. It's because it's a proportional relationship that these these slopes can be written in different ways. So I would actually draw all these points. And that's where it gets extra annoying. I don't want to estimate here. I'm just gonna draw them. It's the it might be the last question, I might be tired, it's worth the most points. There's no reason for me to rush. Now why is why is all the values less than or equal to two hundred minus x? This line is two hundred minus x. We want everything below it. So I have the fortune of using color here, you probably don't. But you want to shade this in, usually kind of perpendicular to the line. You just want to do your two shadings in ways where you can read your graph. So I try to make the direction of my shades, and I could use a, you should use a ruler here, I don't know why I'm not, sorry. Uh, but you want to shade this in so that it's clear to you what's happening. Then for me, I'm going to label this thing. I'm going to be crazy, I'm going to label it right here. Y is less than or equal to 200 minus X. You want to label these things so you can keep track of them. The second equation, 12.5, just copy and paste this, X plus 6.25 Y, is greater than or equal to 1500. So it would get decimals, but maybe we can work this out nicely, right? Maybe we can divide this thing or something. Um, so I'm not going to be overwhelmed by that. I'm going to isolate y again. So 
This time we subtract 12.5x from both sides, so 6.25y is greater than or equal to 1500 minus 12.5x. So I solve for y by dividing by 6.25. So y is greater than or equal to 1500 divided by 6.25, and that's 240, so it's not as discouraging, 240, that fits on our scale, minus 2x, right, 12 and a half uh, divided by 6.25, it's just 2. So this tells me uh, our next line, we're starting at 240 now, and our slope is going down 2 over 1, right, so b is 240, and our slope is negative 2. So our slope is, our rise is going down by 2 and our run is going up by 1, or anything proportional. In our case, I'm going to say down 20 on the rise and up 10 on the run, right? So down 20 on the rise, up 10 on the run. So now we start at 240, and you know what? I didn't label very wisely here, so I should have held off on that, sorry. So we go down 20, up 10. Down 20, up 10. This is down 2, up 1, over and over and over again. Right, down 2 on the y-axis, that really represents going down, down 20, and up up 1 on the x-axis, or it's going up 10 um, on the run. So this is our second line. I don't like this graph because the slopes are so similar that it makes the shading very difficult. And I almost made a big mistake there. Okay, so I'm going to look at my graph, see how many mistakes, down 2 over 1, right? Looks like I got it. But it's, okay, it's hard, it's really hard to see. Okay, so now y is everything that is um, greater than this, right? So we draw our line. Oops, didn't, sorry, it didn't work there. Try again. Draw the line. And now, so now it's everything above it. You see that the shading is really difficult to do because the angles of the two lines are not set up in a nice way. But whatever you do, shade in a way that makes the graph clear for you. So, and we want to label our solution, right? So with the red, we're going to shade, I'm going to shade like this, just at a different angle of the other shading, right? So like this. And you can see it's very tedious here. Just make it clear for yourself. I'm not going to take off points if it's not perfect, right? This is my shading. We should be very careful to label S. So I'm going to say it. I'm not afraid to say it. This is a very poorly designed question because the shading is just so tedious, right? Um, and as long as the shading is clear to me, um, and I guess it's clear enough to you, even though it's kind of still gross, um, we're okay. Now we don't forget to label our solution area. I'm going to color it in for us because I feel like it's really hard to see otherwise. Let me just change the brush because we might, we might need. I think we're going to need those points. So it's this region right here. I'm just going to lightly color it in and then label it S. Right. This is our solution set. Anything in here, in this area, both inequalities are satisfied. We're greater than or equal to this line right here, and we're less than or equal to this line there. So let's just go up. Okay, Marta, last part, hang in there, claims that selling 30 adult tickets and 80 child tickets will result in meeting the cinema's goal. Explain whether she is correct or incorrect. <coughs> okay, so remember um, that X, right, X is adults and Y is child. So X, so that, that might throw you off, but here X is the adults, that's our adult axis, and y is the children, right? Let's label like this, sorry. The y-axis represents the children. Okay, so she's saying, what is she saying? 30 and 80. Okay, so where is that point? 30, okay, and 80, right here. Okay, that's her point. That's the point that Marta's talking about. What is she saying about it? She's saying that it results in meeting the cinema's goal, it does not. Um, and we want to explain. Okay, so you could try it. Plug in 30 and 80. I'm too tired to do it. But plug in 30 and 80 for uh, adults, 30 adults, 80 children. Plug this in to both of our systems, Oops, and you'll see that this doesn't work. What do I mean it doesn't work? It means, it just being that, oh boy, I'm sorry. 
Whoa. Let's hope that stops soon. Okay, a few. So let me just show you what I mean. So this doesn't work on the graph, maybe obviously, now that I have my program back, because it's only in one of the shaded regions. It has to be a point here. So it's not in both shaded regions, you could just say that. But algebraically, if you plug in 30 and 80 to this system right here, it will be less than 200, right? 30 plus 80 is less than 200, less than equal to 200. But if you plug in 30, 80 here, uh, you will not get, you will not make over $1,500. This kind of makes sense, right? The more, the more adults you have, the better. So here, anything here, with more adults who make more money, uh, you'll be all set. Now, obviously, you can't have infinite adults because we're restricted to a total of 200. So, for example, 200 comma zero. That means you have 200 adults, no children. We will make, uh, in that case, the most money uh, possible. But also, um, we will have 200 seats. Any other combination, though, will work. We'll make above 1,500, and we'll still have, we'll, we'll still fit in the arena. All right, so I hope this helped. Hang in there. This is kind of a tougher question because it takes so many steps. But just take deep breaths, breathe, go slowly. Uh, don't let them wear you out. All right, thanks.